Hello everybody, your favorite fabulous fairy Shana here and today we're going to talk about the root chakra. So most of us know what a chakra is and what an aura is, but some of us don't. Generally what an aura is, is that vibration and feeling that our bodies give off. It's almost like an electrical feeling. Some people can see it. I can see it, but it's normally on a grayscale for me from time to time. Only probably about a, a dozen or so times in my life have I seen someone's aura in color. But I can see like the different grayscales on it and I can tell if the vibration is a negative one or a positive one based off of that. Our chakras are, or chakras, excuse me, however you want to say that. I'm sorry, I'm from California. If it's going to drive you up a wall, just be prepared. Also, you're going to probably notice that I will spell it probably several different ways, sometimes with an N, sometimes without. That's because I am dyslexic and even Google doesn't know what the beep I'm talking about sometimes and I don't really care that much to go out of my way to make sure all the spelling is 110% because to me that's not what's important. It's the information that's important and I have bigger fish to fry than to sit there and meticulously go over all of it. I do my best just to get the information out there, so please know that about me. It's not that it's like, oh my gosh, it's just, I mean, I care to an extent, but at the same point in time, that's not the point. The, the point is the information. So if you want to sit there and pick at straws, have a field day, uh, I'm not going to engage because I it's not worth my time. However, what is worth my time is trying to help people feel good and allow their auras to kind of come through be strong, be the very best that they possibly can be. So we're starting at the root and we're walking all the way up, all the way up into our crown chakra, okay? Chakra, chakra. Um, the thing is, is that to fully make sure that each one is at its very best and at its very healthiest. Yes, could you do this all in a day? Sure you could. I even have a meditation that is going through all of the chakras as a rainbow, and um, it's very effective. It worked for me very, very well. You totally can do that. You can get them all to a nice little level to some degree and in one sitting. But if we're talking, you want really, really steady, really, really good aura, really, really strong, strong chakras all the way from the root to the crown, then you should take it kind of a day by day, a time and time and go through each one of these little steps and really make sure you have them down. Spend one day just working with the stones. One day just working with the oil. One day working with the, the yoga. And I'm not saying just one day and you put it away. Add them on top of each other. Let it be a layering system. So start off first with learning maybe the colors and the foods. And then we're going to go into the exercises and the different tools that we can use to help us. The visualization and even the animals that are there to help us. So our root chakra is located at the base of our spine. And basically it is in, in charge of all of our grounding. It's our decision maker, the one that's like, this is who I am. Uh, I feel flexible. I feel solid or I feel weak and like anybody could tip me over. Our root system is very, very important. If our roots are sour, then the plant will die. If our roots are shallow, then we're easily knocked over. We need deep, strong, thick roots that really know who we are and know how to feed us as a plant and as a person so that we can be the best thing that we are so that we can give the love that we need to the, to those around us and we can have that great life that we want to give. So going in through this, let's see what we can do, first of all, to identify what it is that could be something that... Um, that could be a trigger for us that says, hey, this is this is my problem. I know that my root chakra is what is out of whack. And excuse my little list, but there's too many just to go off. So poor mother and child relationship. So if you guys have had, you know, a lot of extreme things with your, your parents and your mom maybe neglected you, maybe you always felt that you were seeking this kind of praise you weren't ever getting and you never really got that. Maybe they're dead. Maybe you still have a sour relationship that could very, very, very much affect you, affect your root, affect your root. Okay. Conflict, loss, anxiety, um, impatience, poverty, financial difficulty, physical neglect, fear of change. Um, these are all things that can like basically be little red flags to you. So if you have really bad fear of change, you feel like you, even if you have 20 bucks, you can't spend that 20 bucks because you don't know where your next 20 bucks is coming from. Or you do know where it's coming from, but you still can't spend it because you know that your bills are all mapped out to the T and you, you know, you don't want to over budget or anything like that. So you have like a fear of poverty or a fear of like being in that. And it's not even that it's not a justified fear. You could have been in poverty your entire life, but we all know and if you don't know, here I am to tell you, it starts in our mind. 
I literally started saying large amounts of money come easily and frequently to me years before they did. Years before they did. And it took me a couple years to realize I was passing up pennies and change on the ground that I should have been picking up that entire time. Because I'm walking by thinking, that penny isn't going to change my life. I'm just going to pass it up. Somebody else needs it more than me. No, I needed it. I needed the penny. So don't pass up the change on the ground. It's literally change for you. So our root chonker rules desire, self-expression, sexuality, as well as our decisions, okay? So if you're feeling cut off sexually and you're like, wow, I, I, I just am not even interested, that could be a part of it. On the other hand, if you're feeling to where um, maybe you're giving yourself away too freely and you're, the sex is there, but it's there's something missing, there's something not being fulfilled, that could be something that you need to deal with too in reining it in a little bit because your root is actually off balance. Your self-expression and your enthusiasm are also huge roles to play with our roots. So if your root is, you know, you feel like I can't talk, I can't say what I need to say, I can't be who I want to be, I feel embarrassed wearing the clothes I want to wear, I feel embarrassed trying something new or going and being the comedian I want to be or doing my stand-up or doing my, um, um, Maybe you're a singer or maybe you want to try that. They, a lot of those kids are into the, the silk flipping, you know, whatever the silk arts, rope dancing, whatever you want to call it. Aerials, I think it's what it's really called, whatever. Um, if you're like, I've always wanted to do this, but for whatever reason, I can't allow myself to pass or go past that boundary and actually open up and experience this, your root could be holding you back. So don't allow your root to hold you back. Okay, so I love essential oils. I will no longer be um, advocating doTERRA. I still sell doTERRA, but I won't be putting, you know, like, hey, I use doTERRA out on any of my videos anymore because they asked me to take some of my videos down. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that, but just so you all know, um, because they said I made a product claim about me losing weight, but I did lose weight with their oil and things like that, so whatever. I'm going to beep it, though, so... I'm going to take down every single thing from them. <clears throat> Pardon me. I need to work on my throat chakra is the one I need to work on because I talk all the time. But um, just because I'm no longer going to be like, this is the oil I use. I still use that oil. I just, I'm not going to waste my time and my energy trying to promote that. That is such a back burner thing. So if you want info on where to get your oils from, you can still ask me and I still know What's up with that and everything like that? I'm just not going to put my energy out there anymore for that company. Um, they did me dirty as far as I'm concerned. So anyways, um, but that being said, the oils that you would use, if you needed to use an essential oil, and I, I highly suggest that they really, really do help. Whatever brand you choose to use, see what happens. <laughs> I can be shitty too. I'm a Pisces. Okay. Um, balancing oils. Okay. So we're going to want to have oils that are heavy in woods that that's going to be like frankincense, hoe wood, even uh, chamomile, blue tansy, things like that. Spikenard, um, oak moss, vetiver, arborvitae, uh, cedar wood, angelica root, frankincense, myrrh. Those are all like very, very good oils and and incenses to burn so if you have incenses the powders the resins or anything else like that and you'd like to incorporate that into your practice for cleansing your root chakra um one thing i do is i have myself a little a little you know metal cup um i put some sand in there and then i pour my powders in here or my re rosins resins whatever in here if you need to put a little coal on them or i have some that are self-lighting and i just let it burn in here and it works perfectly fine it's fire safe you know i don't have it near any thing that's going to catch or anything like that um but it really almost instantly whew, that being said, Palo Santo would be another really good one. So if you want to walk in and really make sure that, you know, I'm having problems with my root. I want to make sure my root is clean and pure and just the best, right? So you're going to walk in as soon as you get into your house, get your Palo Santo going and just smudge yourself down, you know, because that is just one way that we can keep it going. I would put the oils on the pressure points on your feet. Actually, at the base of your spine and kind of around your hoo-ha-ish area, not on your hoo-ha because that would probably burn, but, you know, around that area, um, down at your tailbone. And then also, I would put it on your wrists and uh, at the, you could put it at the points on your feet, on your hands, or on your head that also represent the root. Because we actually have, although we have the chakras, chakras, whatever, here, we also have them throughout 
on different points in their hands. So if you ever met somebody that didn't have a foot, they, you could do it on their hand. Or you, you know, for whatever reason, they're cut off down low. You could, you know, help them other places. Okay. So food. Food is a super awesome one. Food is an amazing thing. Food makes us happy. Food makes us feel better or food makes us feel worse depending on what we're eating. If you have been feeling bogged down, if your root has been lacking, if you have been less than at your prime, possibly try eating more root foods to help strengthen your root chakra. And let's go over what some of those are. Surprise, surprise, the root foods are going to be um, roots. <laughs> so we're, we're doing carrots, potatoes, parsnips, radishes, beets, onions, garlics, protein rich foods. Okay. Eggs, meats, beans, tofu, soy, peanut butter, spices, um, like chives, paprikas, and pepper. Okay. Um, I would throw, um, even though it's, it's kind of a, um, it could, it could be used somewhere else too. I would also say turmeric. Okay. So turmeric is a really, really good one. And that's just good for you anyways. So one thing that we need to look at is, um, you know, what are you surrounding yourself with? If you're wearing a lot of black, if you're wearing a lot of muted colors, if you're wearing a lot of dull colors, that could actually contribute to how you feel. If you notice, I've kind of surrounded myself with a little bit of red, even my pillow here. Okay. Beautiful pillow. Pretend this is our aura. This is our red, sh our red chakra. This is our root. Okay. Somewhere in here, there's little spots of red. And it shines through from time to time, but overall it's dull because of life. And then people hurt us and they tear us down and they tell us that we're not good enough and we think we're not good enough. And before we know it, it's all solid black. Okay. We can't even see it. And then somebody gives us a compliment. Okay. And then, um, we do something good for ourselves like yoga or go on a walk. We start eating kind of healthy. Um, we start wearing red. We start acknowledging the animals and we start listening to what they say. We start acknowledging that we're a good person and that we have everything that we need in life and that we are all we need to be completely fulfilled. And before you know it, you are completely red and razzle dazzle and shiny and awesome. And every now and then something might spark you and get a little bit of here and there. But because we know how to take care of ourselves now, because we know how to clean our aura, we go home, we, we do our Paula Sanjo, we wear our... our um, our oils, we take our bath, we reconnect, we walk a little bit barefoot in nature and nothing can tarnish it back up. And we keep this bright, shiny, beautiful red aura with us. Okay. Um, so if you're feeling like I need more help, do something simple, paint your nails red, uh, put on a red shirt. Uh, when we get to yellow, it's going to be kind of hard because honestly, yellow is not a color I associate with very often out of the entire rainbow. I don't have anything against it, but it's just not my favorite. So, um, and that's funny because I actually just went to a healer the other day for my own little tune up because as a healer, you take on a lot of people's responsibilities and I'd like to be able to help my clients without taking on their physical burdens. And I'm not always the best at that. Um, so I go get my own little tune up and he's pushing and touching. He's like, Oh, well you need work here and you need work here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I know. Right. You know? And then he went to my third eye. He's like, Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. You don't need no work there. And I'm like, yeah, that's the one place. This is my, my laser sight. But everything else I got going on, um, I could also use a little bit of work. So do I practice what I preach? I definitely do. And I'm definitely doing it more often, even myself. Um, and you never know what's going to work for you the best because we are all different until you try. So if you are like, wow, I just really want to get my root in order. And then I want to move and I really want to make sure that my entire aura, my entire chakra set my, is in alignment and it's bright and it's just how it needs to be. Um, then really take it day by day. And like I said, layer these things. Don't be like, okay, one day I'm going to do all stones and one day it's all food and one day it's all clothes and one day it's no layer them on. And then when you feel like it's really set, you'll know, you know, as what Max said, it's like when the rain washes you clean, you'll know. It's like, you know, you'll know when your root is strong because you will feel strong and you will feel like independent and nothing's really, uh, bugging you and nothing can really hurt you. Exercise is super important no matter who you are and even if you can't do what you think you could do or you're not doing the kind of exercise you wish you could do, even simple stretching can really make all the difference in the world. Um, things like isometrics, things like yoga, things like water aerobics or even just time in, in a warm bath and stretching while you're in there, they can really, really help. 
Okay, so um, I've got these exact poses. If you want to know more about these poses, I found them on uh, doyouyoga.com. So I will leave that across and below. Um, didn't talk to him before, nothing. I just looked at it. I liked it. I'm sharing it, you know, free advertising on my part, I guess. I liked they had the uh, tree pose for our root. They had the warrior pose and the mountain pose, okay? I love those. Those are all very solid poses. I'm not going to try to perform them for you. I wouldn't even be able to do them right. But if you are into that kind of thing, there's a couple for you to check out. Feel free to find your own and do your own as well. Other things that are suggested is dancing. It's like, you know, who doesn't love to dance? And even if you're not a great dancer, a little bit of a jig in your step can make all the difference in the world. I personally like to sing. Singing helps align me, not just my throat chakra, but everywhere. Um, but you know, a little bit of boogie never hurt anybody either. So if you're good with that, do that. Animals in our root. Oh, hello, Calypso. You decide to dress up like me? And she cutums. Calypso loves kisses. Mwah. She is such a good girl. You know, animals, um, they pop up all throughout the day, whether you see them on TV or whether you see them in print. That's another one of mine wanting in right now. Darla's like, I want in! Um, but, you know, me and Lippy match, so Lippy got to come in this time. Lala got to come in last time, too. Stay on track, Shana. Oh, my gosh, my sorry. You're just so cute. Um, when my Sydney Wiggles died, my boxer, she, it took her, like, three days, probably, of kind of going downhill, and during those three days, I saw elephants everywhere. I mean, everywhere, on TV, on people's shirts. Uh, in the magazines, like everywhere, just nonsensical. Um, and people kept bringing them up. My love even gave me a stuffed elephant. I didn't, t t I didn't tell him I'd been seeing elephants, nothing. And then right after she died, um, my roommate gave me a, a teapot with an elephant on it and it happened to be red, like the root chakra as well. And I could not help but just be like, okay, what does this animal mean to me? What is this animal trying to teach me? And so I looked it up and I looked up elephants and elephants are seriously about family, about the matriarch, about holding it together, about remembering, about um, being strong enough to take the, the wisdom from the ages and bring it forward to the young to, to make the, the pilgrimage from, you know, one end to the other uh, to see it through so that everybody else can live and survive. And it was absolutely beautiful and absolutely astounding. And it resonated with me absolutely so much that um, elephant is my new spirit guide animal for the moment, unless something else comes in play, but nothing else has yet. So I think I'm still on level elephant. Um, a few of my people, I tell them, you're on level hummingbird, you're on level elephant, you're on leather. What does that mean? I'm like, that's, that's the animal that you're dealing with right now. I don't think there's any particular order. It's just that's the level that you happen to be on. And I am at elephant right now. So that being said, there are other, um, other animals that are totally in line with the root chakra, elephant being one of them. The next is a bear. Bears, um, actually can be very docile and less threatened. They're great mothers. They have great instincts. They like to hibernate. They like to be protected. They like to be warm. If you aren't taking care of yourself enough, if you're not giving yourself the essentials of life or you're neglecting yourself, the bear may be popping up for you. There are other reasons for the bear too. It's a symbol of strength. It's a really good creature. So if you're looking at the bear and you're seeing bears everywhere, look it up and see what else it has to tell you. The next is a tortoise. Tortoises have the ability and the and the longevity to know what a good thing is and to make the pilgrimage from point A to point B. They're a symbol of vitality and fertility. They have a ton of eggs at one time because they know that not all of them are going to make it. So they're constantly producing so many so that their chances are better. Um, if you're somebody who's been seeking that true family, <laughs> my Lala, um, or seeking treasure um, of whatever sign, whatever kind, you know, be it a romantic treasure, spiritual treasure, faith, um, you will have what it takes to get there. Research what the turtle has to tell you. It, you're going to find a lot more. Oh my goodness. Should I let it in? I should probably let it in. Should I let it in? Let's get the Lala. This is my Lala La. It's a little thing that was grumbling in the corner wanting to get in. Can I do my show now? Oh, I want my hat off, please. Okay. Okay. Go on, my loves. So, 
tortoises, if you've been seeing a lot of tortoises, that means that there is something really, really awesome in your life, but you have to keep moving. You have to keep going forward. And this isn't one of those things where you're going to be able to power through it and get it all done. And one day it's going to be one of those things where you're going to have to take the daily actions, small daily actions and efforts will get you to that treasure. The next would be the skunk. So a skunk is going to be, um, really kind of harmless also they're very protective of themselves they go ahead and and uh, get a close inspection before they judge they're really not afraid of anybody they'll come up and say hey you know what's going on and give a fair a little fair trial before they decide if they need to spray you or not so um, if skunks have been coming up you probably need to protect yourself a little bit more from the people around you and like I said you guys please look these up because there's so much more to this but I can't just spend forever on these. Maybe one day I'll do just the spirit animals on their own, but for now this is just kind of all encompassing. Um, and also skunk, you might need to protect your boundaries more. You probably have unhealthy boundaries. You're allowing people maybe to encroach on your space a little bit too much. Uh, buffaloes, they take care of the herd. Um, they're really, really strong creatures. They protect the young. Um, they're family animals. They really do. That's what they're if you're seeing a lot of buffaloes, it's a family has been on your mind a lot. Lioness, she takes care of the pride. Uh, she actually does most of the hunting. They take care of the pack. They have the, or the, the cubs and everything like that. Pride, pack, sorry. <laughs> Cats and dogs, right? Um, but if you're seeing a lot of lioness, you, you want to take care of yourself. You're probably having partner relationship problems uh, with the male in your life. And possibly even jealousy problems and things like that are also arising. So... Check out these animals. See what else that they have to offer you. Look them up. At worst case scenario, message me. I'll see if I can help you. Because you should know about them. Okay. So, for our stones. Obviously, garnet. Woo! This is a really dark garnet. It only shows its secrets in the light at a certain air angle. And I'm actually going to be able to see them from this angle that way. But it is a very, very dark red. It's almost black. Garnet is definitely, definitely great for your root chakra. So is pretty much pick a red stone, okay? We could do fire agate. We could do uh, red carnelian. We could do uh, sunstone. We could do uh, bloodstone. We can also do the jasper, hematite, black agate, um, ruby, tourmaline quartz, and obsidian. So if you're looking for something to calm down your root chakra, like you feel like it's too fired up, like say you're overly sexual or you're, you're overly in people's faces, you know, like people who like, you need to calm down. You're too aggressive. Um, things like that. You might want to use some tourmaline or some hematite to calm that down, kind of soothe that, calm that down. So what I would do is I'd take my little stone, I'd lay down and I would put it right, like you put it under you or on top of you, right at the base of where it is, you know, and then you like literally allow the stone to absorb the energy allow it to balance that energy. Another thing that you could do would be to wear it as a necklace. Um, I have a lot of stones on here. I will say not all stones play nicely with, with one another. Some kind of counteract each other. So look at what stones you have before you put them on a necklace. Um, another thing to do would be just as a, as a meditation practice in general, you can sit there and get into a comfy position I like to do palms open. You can have your stone in your hand like this. So I've got my palms open. They're in my lap, right? I'm in, you know, cross legs, but comfortable position as best as you can or sit straight or do your legs down or however you can feel comfortable, okay? And you're going to take deep breaths in. And as I'm doing this, I'm feeling it come up, come down, Go all the way down to my root, circle around, kind of come down my leg, up to my toes, come back up and out my mouth. And I'm picturing the air comes in and it's nice and clean and bright and, you know, you can't see it. It comes down, it swirls around my root chakra, it becomes muddied, almost dirty air. And as I blow it out, the particles of dust and, and gray and nasty, they float on out into the ether. They actually are collected by the trees and they nourish the trees the same as carbon monoxide would. So I did it. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. Anyways, so, um, but that's what I envision. And it takes me at least two or three really deep.
breaths before I start to see the color on my root get brighter. So, I mean, it's going from, from a dull and we're starting to see the color come back. Okay. So you're like, you're, you're here, you know, and it's like this and you just, every breath kind of washes it back in until you've got the, the, the pure, clear, beautiful, bright, um, ruby red. I like to see myself surrounded by a glow of red also. So things like, this is a piece of chiffon that I got for my birthday, if I can reach it. Um, it's sheer. Chiffon is a very soft, uh, sheer, lightweight, slinky kind of fabric. Very soft. You can cover yourself in something like this to help yourself visualize the glow around you. You could put red lights into your room or get like, I have, um, you know, like a yard light, but you just have one on one of those like clamshell clamp things. Get some colored lights. When you're on your root chakra time, put in the red light, sit there, bask in the red light, feel the glow, look around, see the glow, have your stone in your hand. Remember left is for receiving, you know, and this, your right hand is for your giving. So you're asking for this to, to take in and be part of you and to, you know, absorb. So allow it to absorb. Okay. So hold it in, absorb it, see the color go around you, say thank you. Um, you could also do positive affirmations. I am strong. I am in control. I know what I want. I'm grounded. Things like that. They really, really do help, but they help more if you repeat them. So repeat them to yourself over and over again until it becomes you know, I guess, uh, second nature, it's just in your mind. You don't have to worry about it any longer. You know that you're grounded. You know that you're strong. You know that your root is strong and you can visualize it with your mind's eye, whether you're open or closed with your eyes open or closed, you can see the red glow and you feel the healthy glow. Tones are another thing that can definitely, definitely help strengthen all of our chakras. So no matter if you're going to be singing them, listening to them, doing the tones of the bowls, um, humming, there's so many different things you can do. There are different sounds that you can get. So um, I've picked some and I listed them for my little slides and, you know, go ahead and try those out or try other ones. I mean, that's completely fine too. Go find some, go experiment, see what works for you. The beautiful thing is we are all different. So we're all going to resonate with something a little bit differently than the, less, than the next person did. So just let's, you know, acknowledge that, love it, go for it. I hope you guys like this. I hope this helped and please stay tuned in the upcoming weeks and months because I am going to be going all the way through the root all the way to the crown. The next is going to be our sacral chakra that is located behind our navel and uh, we're going to be going over everything that has to do with that. Those will be posted one at a time just like this was. If you like this and you want to see it quicker, uh, hit me up on Patreon and I can get you things a little bit quicker. Um, other than that, I love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of this. Feel free to check out my website, www.thefairyshana.com. And I love you all and I'll talk to you later, I guess. Bye.